Good day all and welcome to Clevena TV in Diaspora. My name is Esther Chidera and I'm your host for the day. Before I introduce our amazing guest in the house, let me first just give you a little explanation about Clevena. Clevena TV in Diaspora is an internet online TV service and we are created to bring in Africans who are back home and in, in Diaspora together to celebrate and to appreciate their achievements. So guys, it's very important for you to sign up Sign up at www.clevenet.com so that you can watch our amazing channels. Everything that we offer, we offer so much. So please, just sign up so that you can enjoy all that we offer. Um, now we have this amazing guest, as I said before, Mr. Sunny Lambe. And he is a business management consultant as well as a community leader. Um, we are so happy to have him in the house. Um, good day, sir, and welcome to Clevenet TV. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. Sir, can you kindly tell us about yourself? Well, um, first of all, I want to say once again, thank you for having me uh, on your program. Um, I'm Councillor, um, a politician based in the UK, in London. I represent a ward called South Bermondsey, and I'm a Labour councillor, and I've been since 2014, and I've been in elected um, you know um, three times now the first was 2014 we elected again in 2018 and just recently uh, in May 2022 for the total awesome awesome so sir where were you <laughs> Are you, <laughs> no, I, I just wasn't. need you to just explain to us because I know a lot of viewers would love to know exactly <laughs> where you are from, where you grew up, where you did your educations and so on. You know, it's funny because a lot of people ask me, the past, especially with my name, some people think I'm from, you know, Uganda or from Cameroon, you know. Yeah, Cameroon. I actually thought you were from Cameroon. <laughs> I'm guilty of that. <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm actually from Nigeria, West Africa, you know, and also from Yoruba land. Um, originally, um, I was born in Ibadan, and my parents are both Ibadan. Uh, mom, dad, grandparents, and so on. In fact, historically, uh, with some people don't know, um, my great great grandfather, uh, Fijabi, because that's a, you, you, you know, the son of Makul I've been using, uh, is actually mm -hmm. the one that signed the protectory agreement uh, treaty with the British in 1897. Uh, you wow. know, we do it after the Civil War. Uh, sorry, yeah, the Civil War, the Yoruba Civil War. Um, so, yes, I'm right, um, Nigeria and Yoruba. I'm stuck Yoruba, man. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, because I actually thought you were Cameroonian. I won't lie to you. I actually thought you were from Cameroon. Which is <laughs> no, you, you trust me, you wouldn't have made any mistake because a lot of people think I'm Cameroonian. But funny enough, as an African, I get, I get on with everybody. Actually. Most people, especially from my diverse um, communities, whether it's Yalunian, Cameroonian, um, South African, you know, um, Zimbabwean, you know, Ugandan, yes, um, or people from the Caribbean, our extended family from the Caribbean, and happen to have my own family from the Caribbean as well. So I'm um, Mr. Universe. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Great, sir. Sir, I see that on Twitter you've been on fire about you've been asking the public to vote for you. What exactly are you contesting for? Oh, funny enough, um, to be honest, it, at the moment, there's nothing the public can do at the moment because of the way the system works. Now, it's just for you to be out there and let people know you are interested. So it's an expression of interest because the party machines still have to do their own bit. You have to express an interest, you put an application in, and then they vet you to know whether you're a credible candidate, you know, prospective candidate. And then they then, um, you know, the machine will then decide, um, you know, how many they're going to take through the short testing. And then they decide, um, uh, you know, if you, they're going to put their faith in you, to become the flag bearer for your party. So there's still a long way to go. But um, what's important is that you put your, uh, yourself out there that you are interested. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, there always, there's something we always say, especially when related to, 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 the, to the lottery. If you have to be in it to win it. <laughs> so, true, true, true. so we have to be in it to win it. So that's why. But I still have a long way to go. 
but I just want people to know that yes, I'm interested, and I have the right to be interested in the in the in, uh, to represent the people because I've lived in the area for over 36 years, um, and it's the only area I've ever lived here you know, throughout my mm. life in the UK, and I've mm. and I've contributed positively to development of the area as well in many ways. Um, you know, I mean, um, I remember when. Um, you know, when Damilola Tilo, I don't know, is a story that's very familiar with a lot of people. Well, one of our young, um, I think he was 10 years old when um, he, his life was cut short in the area. Mm. And, um, you know, of course, it shocked a lot of people. But um, the young boy, I think, was only really, he was relatively new in the area when he died as a young boy of 10. And mm. of course, when you then ask young people in the area um, what they were, okay, the excuse they were giving is that because they were bored, that's why they got into all sorts of troubles and so on. But of course, that wasn't the excuse when I was growing up in Nigeria. But at the same time, mm. times, you know, <laughs> times are changing, you know, so we have to respond. Change. So therefore, I decided to, you know, to set up the Peckham Supplementary School, um, you know, for young people. We were teaching them black history, drama, um, helping them with math and English and so on. I mean, that's actually how I started getting involved in the area in a very, very active way. Even though my local church, you know, I've, you know, attended the same church for the past 35 years, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've been well, got involved in local tenants and resident associations. So I've been involved in so many other things. Um, in the that's area. Part of it because, um, you know, when mm. you find yourself in an area you spend three to five, three to five or more years, then it becomes your own mm. after a while. Oh, then you have true. to see how do you Very want true. to contribute to the development of that area. So it's not just about taking, okay. it's about also giving back. And that's giving part of my uh, relationship with okay. the area where I think, yes, um, I deserve to, you know, to represent them. After all, I've been doing my beat over the last um, three and a half decades. So I'm guessing that's one of the reasons why why you're so passionate about becoming an MP in that area, Camberwell and Packham. Basically, it's the youth that are doing other things. You want to just bring them to the right um, um, the right path. Basically, mm -hmm. is that why you're passionate? Why, why are you so passionate about becoming an MP? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I've always believed that, okay, um, I think there's, um, there's an African program that says um, uh, that the birds of worry and care fly above your head. This you cannot change. But that they build nests in your air, this you can prevent. Yes, we have mm. challenges in the area. Uh, social mm. economic and so on or maybe there isn't much you can do with all the you know elected councillors or mp in the area they try all their best but question i always ask myself is a member of that particular community what mm. can i do to affect mm. change positively so yeah. therefore um having looking within myself inwardly and say what do i have to offer I'm um, a management consultant and with expertise and experience and so on. And I'm a member of the community. What can I do to affect change? To affect so change. all that made mm -hmm. me to, okay, this is the situation we find ourselves. We cannot bring the poor boy that died. And there are other kids that died. I remember another one called Shol, uh, Shola Agoro and a few mm -hmm. others that died around the same time. So uh, it's not just Amilola. Of course, Amilola one was probably more publicized one. So mm. then listening to the local people, I ask myself, how do I be part of that change? Mm. So, and that's all got me um, involved, bringing local communities together, organize, and then set up all these projects, you know, football, all various activities. Even at Black History Month in October, we, we put up um, performances. Uh, in fact, that actually funny enough, I will recognize uh, with him. Uh, with the uh, liberty of old metal pen borough of Kambawa, uh is is you know a civil award um for my mm. contribution to the you know to the area and to the community yeah. as well so therefore yes um, when you see something that you don't like um mm. then ask yourself what can you do 
if it's only it's if it's only multi if the multiple of things are hundreds of them if you take one out mm -hmm. you don't have 100 anymore you have minus <laughs> one or two or yes, three exactly. so that's my personal attitude to be honest with you yeah. okay okay not a problem so uh, i'm talking about you spoke about your expertise and so on so now my question is what track records expertise and experiences do you have that makes you think that you're more suitable than other candidates to be an MP? What, well, what, um, what are the track records? Mm. <laughs> well, I think um, I've just given you one example. I'm a you know, I have yes. business management background uh, mm. with, uh, five, with 25 years experience. Um, mm. I've, I've set up uh, many projects, you know, um, several youth enterprise program, which um, enable um, people, um, especially young people, um, who have entrepreneurial skills, uh, mm -hmm. acumen to develop their expertise in, you know, through by creating employment opportunity for themselves, not just for themselves, for others as well. Because when you set mm -hmm. up a business, you employ yourself first, and then hopefully you can employ others. And therefore, yes. cycle, that cycle goes on. And that's just mm -hmm. one bit. Even when I set up the youth project I mentioned before, it's because of my management expertise, I was able to bring people together and then, of course, use my own finance to help to where, you know, because I was employed at that time. Remember, I was actually working for another local authority as a business support mm -hmm. officer. And I actually set up, um, you know, the, funny enough, I'm always looking for of gaps and then see how I can fill it. I remember when I was mm. working for them and there was um their charm minders, you know, and charm minders um not people people think the new people that are engaged in charm minding, looking after other people see are those who are drop out and so on. Then I asked mm. myself, hang on, if you why would I trust my child or my children with mm. somebody that is not qualified? But mm. unfortunately, the reputation is that, oh, yeah, then, okay, how do we raise, you know, <laughs> raise the game for them? So I then spoke mm. to the government at first. The national government allowed the local authority to be created. So I then put a proposal mm. in and then developed an handbook, which was called a handbook making chart minding my business. So in that handbook, um, there are so mm. many steps that they can take, the, for instance, registration, you know, the legal mm. processes they have to follow and so on. So, um, and it raises their profile and the way people perceive them in the, you know, in the public and so on. So I always look at ways by which I can use my expertise, whether my school, whether my, you know, um, you know, professional. And even when you look at even the Bible tells us that we are all endowed with different gifts. I think it's a vision, mm. chapter 4, is the 1, 2, 13, or something like that. We all endow with different gifts. It's what we do with those gifts that matter. So um, if we look inside ourselves, we all endow with something. And what do we do for, for humanity? And that's what I always try mm. to do. So even if I'm elected now, um, if I'm selected, I, you know, what can I do for humanity? Uh, in the frequency okay. that are, you know, I represent mm. and, 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 and that's my next question, but that will be after a break. Let's just take a <laughs> short break and then Mr. Sunny here will tell us exactly what he would do differently, what his plan is for the community if he's elected or selected to be the next MP. Let's just take a short break and we'll be right back. Thanks. Clevenard in Diaspora Television is an internet online TV service. What sets us apart is a unique combination of hit African content, first and exclusive international free movies, series, musics, news, events, documentaries, tourism, teleshopping shows, youth TV programs, and live interviews. Clevenard Diaspora Television is available throughout Sub-Saharan Africa and to the diaspora markets worldwide. Take your entertainment with you wherever you go. Watch on your smartphone, tablet, laptop, smart TV, depending on your device. Watch free movies with Clevenard Movies Television. Stop searching for free movies websites and watch Clevenard Movies Television. Watch your favorite African shows 
anywhere at any time. Don't forget to check out our top 5 TV channels created to get you informed. TV1 – Clevenard in Diaspora Television TV2 – Clevenard Youth Television TV3 – Clevenard Movies Television TV4 – Clevenard Teleshopping Television TV5 – Clevenard Tourism Television To start watching, sign up at www.clevenard.com and follow the easy steps. Once you're done, log in to the Clevenard website or app on your device, click on any one of our five TV channels and hit play. We will be very satisfied and happy to welcome you to our team as one of our new business partners. Contact info at clevenard.com plus 34631279811. Website www.clevenard.com. Good day, all. We're back again. Before the break, uh, Mr. Sunny was telling us um, all the things he has done um, in the community and so on. But now I would like to know if he's elected as um, the new MP, what will he do differently? What is his plan for the community? So, sir, please just tell us what you do differently, what your plan is, um, if you are elected to become the, the next MP. Um, you know, um, I mean, first of all, we need to actually acknowledge um, all the great things the present MP, uh, who's there now and is going to step down, um, you know, because been there for decades and decided now I need to have my break now. Um, our MP, our retirement, uh, has done, I think, been a fantastic MP for the area for decades. In fact, um, you know the youth project I mentioned earlier, the Peckham Supplementary mm. School, which I formed yes. in 2001. I think on the 30th of April 2001, when the project was launched, it was actually mm -hmm. gave us the honor of coming to launch the, you know, the project for us. So I'm mm -hmm. uh, a fantastic MP, and uh, we're very difficult for anyone to easily, you know, Feel her shoes, you know, uh, when she leaves. Mm -hmm. However, um, because I've always also lived in the area um, as one of the constituents who over three and a half decades, I understand the challenges we are facing uh, in terms of um, you know youth, um, you know, facing in terms of youth provision, in terms of unemployment, in terms of uh, you know. Uh, challenges around crimes and, you know, disorder and so on. So, yes, uh, working with the committee, I believe um, I can put my own um, um, knowledge and experience over the years to see how we can work with local committee to turn things around positively. And, of mm. course, I'm very strong in community, community relation and capacity building. Of course, I'm not saying that just what is the local MP does, because the MP is not just for the area or the country where he or she represents. Um, he also is interested in international development, because it's an area that has um, very diverse um, communities of African. Um, when you see African, we have Nigerian, Ghanaians, uh, we have people from, um, you know, East Africa, South Africa as well. Of course, predominantly, I would say, you know, they are Nigerians and Yoruba as Hebrews. And of yes. course, and we also have um, the Caribbeans as well, you know, people from different islands, Jamaicans, you know, Barbadian, you know, and so many people from those areas. And we have um, some from Asian as well. For the area, it will be the predominantly African, people of African and Caribbean origin. So um, having somebody like myself from the African Black Committee representing them, obviously you can see across all the things I've been doing for decades, whether in the terms mm -hmm. of tenants movement and so on, we had value to you know to you know to that role. Um, but mm -hmm. most importantly, um, issues that affect us uh, at this national level, obviously mm -hmm. um, you know I'll be able to articulate that because I'm from that background. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, that uh, you know that extra, um, you know um, that extra 
better input from myself, from my understanding of the issues and my closeness to the committees and so on. I think that we add, um, you know, value to the whole, um, you know, uh, to my role as one of the MPs from the area because it's about advocacy. It's about looking at issues that affect local people and making sure you are able to articulate that. It's also about working with other uh, communities as well, uh, other stakeholders. You know, like the local mm -hmm. authority, Sovereign Council, which um, you know is the is the um, responsible for delivering for not just for the constituency where I want to represent, but because we have three constituencies. We have Campbell and Peckham, which one constituency. So we have no, uh, you know, uh, Dulwich and West Norwood. And then we have Demonty and Old Suburb, um, which all oh, these are three constituencies. Um, two, uh, the, you know, so with me, we have three MPs. It's just that, you know, our current MP for Campbell and Suburb, uh, so Campbell and Peckham, he's stepping down. That's why there's a vacancy. So therefore, yes. Um, if um, if I have the privilege of carrying uh, my Liberal Party banner as a uh, candidate to then face other political mm -hmm. parties, because each other party will have their own candidates, like um, the Tory, the Conservative Party, um, the Liberal Democrat, and of course there are also some other independent um, parties as well, candidates that may want to stand. But what's important oh. is that uh, if I'm given the privilege or the opportunity to carry my party flag, then uh, mm. being, being the first black African person to represent <laughs> India is a huge yeah. honor, which I don't, I'm not going to take lightly. Um, I'm going to use it, you know, for the benefit of the whole communities, not just black communities, That's but really the world I actually represent now, uh, mm. South Democracy, which I represent as a council owner, as I mentioned earlier, where they've been mm. electing me, this is the third term. And this actually predominantly white area, and yet they mm -hmm. represent, so they selected me as a candidate, and they've been voting for me, and my vote has been increasing every year, every, at every That's election great. since then. So you can see, so I'm That's able great. to walk across racial boundaries. Mm -hmm. but I'm able to walk across it because I've been doing that for decades, including most of mm -hmm. the projects I've done. So it would be a great honor if I'm given that opportunity to represent them. Um, Kambewa and so forth, and Kambewa and um, Kambewa and Pekan, okay. you know, uh, constituency mm. as their yeah, mm. That's great because the fact that you've lived there for a very long time means that you understand their struggle, you understand what issues they are going through because you need to be in, a, in an environment for you to actually know what people are going through because you can't just be outside and know what's going on. You need to be in an area to know what they're going through. That's awesome, sir. So let's, um, you are the founder of uh, BLM, which is the Black Labour Movement UK, right? Yeah. Um, can you... Yeah, great. So can you please tell us how long it's been in existence and the objective of BLM? <laughs> you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a person, I would say Syria project uh, or founders because um, mm. I just look at if I see there's a problem, mm. now I ask myself, mm. what can I do to be part of the solution to that problem? Now, in my own party, as great as my party is, the Liberal Party, mm. I realize that uh, we need to do more to make people from the black community mm. be they are part of the whole setup, you know, mm. if they are in included in the whole process. And we are still working on that inclusion. And I'm mm. glad that leadership are doing that. However, in 2016, when I started becoming, you know, um, you know, um, extremely active in the party, because I've been a member of the party since, uh, since 1999. Mm. And then I've been part of the labor movement, that is, you know, um, the trade union and so on, since 1989. Mm. I was actually the first um, leader for part-time postal workers during my student days who fought for part-time workers' rights, that is, improve in working condition for part-time workers, which then, mm. you know, because there was no rights at that time. Well, I was working okay. most of it, and we didn't have any rights. So I was elected. Mm. In fact, you can see that I was only 
Oh, no, three years old in the country that time. <laughs> Where some people thought, and some, I remember some people said, God, you know, they are just setting this boy up to fail because he's so relatively new and doesn't even know much. But well, I remember saying to them, um, I'm not going to fail because I have you around me. Mm. If it's you that make me the leader, then I can't fail because you are there to support me. Mm. Only if my tree is standing on the soul without the roots. Then I have a problem. So you won't let me tell. Otherwise, you might as well. Don't let her. So they help me. Those who have legal, legal background, those who have been country, even old enough to be my dad or my uncle, all of them, you know, and when we have issue, we sit down, we have meetings, and they will make mm -hmm. a condition. The funny thing is that the union was against us because the management set us up despite the union because they had that so we are sandwiched between the two so we're fighting mm. the union who doesn't see us and then we mm. fight management who want to use us against the union so with me wow. I have to first of all fight, you know and you know um convince the union that we are not against you we are in the same mm. so let's so after we won the argument the union accepted us and before we started now facing the, the management and uh, <laughs> God's grace, we are able to achieve something together. We had some very, um, you know, noticeable improvements our working conditions. So, so that's my background in relation to that. For I've always been so, as you know, the union played a great part in the Labour Party, especially in the UK. I don't know about other countries. So we have that strong bond, strong relationship. But I never became, become actively involved in the Labour Party itself until 1999 when I then joined. And often I wasn't even actively involved. I was a member throughout up to today. So it got mm. to 2013 when I then was selected to represent South Bermondsey. Not even Peckham, where our Peckham or Campbell, where I've always lived. Mm. So because mm. the party, the way it works, is not like that. You can be choosing anywhere. Anyway, so I was selected as a candidate there. And so um, in 2016, with my experience and so on, um, I saw the way black people, because we have 10 black people of African, mm. Caribbean, and so on. Eight of them, seven to eight, will tell you they vote for the Labour Party. You then ask, what we get back in return? No many people can see this what we get back. So other committees, they use their voting power for negotiation. And that's how mm. black labor movement was set up. And that's when, when you look at the tagline, black labor speaking for ourselves. Because our committees mm, have been speaking on our behalf, like that. but now okay. black men, women, people with disability, or LGBTQ+, plus, or black community, either from direction from Africa or from the Caribbean, we want to have our own effective voice. Also. And that is what uh -huh. black labor is all about. That's awesome. That's great, sir. That's really great. And I hope um, uh, you are achieving what you actually set out to achieve. And you've achieved a couple of things um, since you've started the Black Labour Movement UK. We actually, you know, we actually, um, we're doing very well because um, the, the, um, our Labour Party management actually, leadership actually listen to us. Because you probably, I don't know if you watch on Al Jazeera, um, you know about um, you know the that, or in the news or in the media about some issues we had in relation to um, in some incidents of um, racism and so on within the party, which the mm. party is actually actively dealing with. But the um, party mm. also involved us in um, in the process to you know listen to what we got to contribute as well. So, um, mm. yes, I think we are doing very well. Even I'm actually representing Black Labour Movement on the roundtable discussion about the recommendation that came from that, um, from that report, which is called the Ford Enquiry. You, you can check online. So the parties are risen up to, to the challenge and put people mm. together to look at, dissect all the issues and then see what we can mm -hmm. do. And I've been invited to be around that. In fact, we had one meeting already. So yes, Black mm -hmm. Labour is, um, is taking seriously, and Black Committee especially is taking seriously that, yes, um, you know, we need to take them seriously. They're giving us our votes. Mm -hmm. That's how we say, you know, now we have to, we must listen to them 
of their concern. And don't forget, whether in Libor or any other party, it's very difficult because imagine when you have 10, you know, when you have three children and they all come to mm. you at the same time to demand. You have to decide mm. what you to, what actually have and whether it can go around. Mm. And then when you have no what you are, and okay, how much am I going to give this one? And the same thing with the yes. Labour with the political party. So mm. we can't say we need 10 and we expect to get the old 10. We are just fooling ourselves. We have to be realistic. So Black Labour Movement is a very pragmatic organization. Uh, we want to work with the establishment in every way we can. At the same time, we want to mm. be taken seriously. But we also know that we can't get everything we have, to, everything. but we can go for the best we can get out of very challenging situation. So we are very realistic, point. <laughs> mm, half bread is better than none, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir, so we're going to take a short break, and then when we get back, uh, we're going to talk about your book. And I'm okay. very excited about you because I want to know <laughs> what it's about. So let's just um, go on a short break, guys. We'll be right back. Okay. Hello there. Looking for an African movie? Search no further. Cleveland African Movies TV is here for you. We are dedicated to the acceleration of African films, TV series, documentaries, and lots more. Explore our movies at home or on the go. Cleveland Art Movies is free to watch on clevelandart.com. Don't miss this opportunity. Hurry now. Sign up and subscribe today. Welcome back, guys. So before the break, we were talking about the BLM, which is the Black Label Movement UK. Um, but right now, we we're going to talk about Mr. Sunny's book. I'm so excited. I want to know what the book is about. It's called uh, Unbroken, A Dream for My Sister. So, sir, please just tell us about your book. Oh, well, you know, thank you very much, Esther. And, you know, um, to be honest with you, um, you know, they say black men don't cry. But in the process, if I start saying something that become okay. emotive, you have to forgive me. <laughs> oh, so this because, is a free um, platform. You <laughs> no, well, I'll put my anchor to next to me because, <laughs> because um, yeah, it's a very touching subject. I mean, from what you've mm. had about me and my life and the journey and everything, mm. uh, you might, even if you go out, the, how, the letters after my after mining, you probably think oh, I've been studying all my life. I've been to, you know, I mean, I have the privilege also, uh, you know, going to Oxford, if it's only for one day and all that. But, you know, yeah, <laughs> at but, least you know, I um, hope you took pictures. I hope you took pictures there so they can know that I was at Oxford. <laughs> on serious, I was there. <laughs> but on serious note, um, you know, okay, I. I was born in um in the in the fifty well last part of the fifty so I'm sixty three, but the first three uh I, when I was about two and a half three the parents broke up okay and my parents um I think at that point I think they had they have my older sister myself which you're probably going to find in the book um. I just want to give you a little gist about the book and why the book was important. Yeah. Yes, and um, you know, um, something happened and it disrupted the whole family set up and so on. So, my mm -hmm. sister had to be, um, you know, go and live with her auntie, mm -hmm. her extended family. Mm -hmm. Then it got to a point whereby the challenge became great. Of course, the process in my young, younger sister came to mm -hmm. came to life as well. That even compounded the mm -hmm. challenge for mom and that. Then that lost its sight, you know. And then it became, as you know, there is no provision for people with disabilities and so on. And the process, even the medical uh, care that was available wasn't that there, not as advanced as it mm -hmm. is now. So, which means that we have to use um, the local medicine and so on. And anyway, all the family income 
treasure, you know, a bank, you know, piggy bank was exhausted. So mm. it became a struggle, a very difficult situation for the whole family. So um, that also, which means that we affect my education, where I supposed to start primary school at the age of six, I couldn't start from the age of 13, oh. primary school. Well, you see, fortunately, that was the time when the war, you know, where some people have negative effects of the war, and, you know, in, you mm. know, the civil war in Nigeria. Mm. But we had a lot of people from the East, you know, who mm. were denied their education. So therefore, age wasn't matter anymore because um, the education of many people are disrupted. You find, even I was telling you I was at age of 13, you find some people age of 15, 16, much older than me, who started primary school at the same time with me, especially my brothers and sisters from the East, you know, and the middle belt, mm -hmm. yes, I, you know. So, um, but I didn't start my primary school at the age of 13. So, um, in fact, over 13, I would say, because you start school in September. So, <laughs> and I was uh, only 13 in June, <laughs> so. Wow. So, um, so that, that um, went on, and in fact, I could have ended in uh, anywhere. Um, you, then you know, at that age, you've already developing, you know, yes, yes, as a man, you were becoming a man, and so on. Therefore, even when you look at the Western world these days, even when they are 12, 11, 12, they tell you they are already, you know, I'm an adult now, I can make my own decision. Imagine, but whereas in our own society, even when you are 18, 22, and they see you are their baby, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, even if when you, when you get married, they still consider you still my child. You know, child. tell me about it. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm serious now. So, um, because I'm just trying to give you background to the book, you know, yeah. Yes, so yes. Yeah, that's important. forgive me if it's a bit too boring. Because, no, 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 no. We know, need to understand why you have so much passion. Exactly. About, like, exactly. when it comes to helping people, it should come from somewhere, yeah. Exactly. So, if you look at the title now, um, the mm. title say Unbroken. Mm. A dream for my sister. So let's break into two. Unbroken okay. bit. That's why I gave you just about my own experiences of background mm. and so on. So my sister ended up with, um, you know, with her aunt, uh, my mm. dad's older sister. Uh, because my mm. dad and their mom, funny enough, they lost their mom when they were, you know, very young as well. So mm. the aunt has to, my dad's older sister had to grow up very, very quickly take a lot of responsibility mm. so and because my dad yeah so she became mm. responsible for even looking after my own dad until they became you know mm. adults and so on and then plus our own she then she was sad with responsibility of looking after my you know my own um, my older sister mm. so i was with my mom for a while and then the, the challenges were a bit too much you know so because she now has a little baby to look after so um mm. It was told that I should end up with my dad. My dad being a single parent, lots of challenges and so on. So I was toss between my dad because they say, oh yeah, he's not a responsible man. You know, he hasn't got married yet. Nobody to help him look after the boy. So mm -hmm. doing that period, you know, going on backward from one family to another, mm -hmm. um, because that's what dysfunctionality of the family has to a child. Plus the physical yes, and yes. emotional, psychological, mm -hmm. all of the aspects of it. So, unfortunately, mm -hmm. my sister was denied education because oh, of because all that. You know, those days they say, well, after all, you go and get married and, go get married you know, and, and everything with it. Yes. All. <laughs> <laughs> so, he was yeah. denied education. And then, um, then it was my sister who said, uh, even if you deny me education, mm. you cannot deny my brother. Wow. Mm. Remember I said as a touching bit, which I find very strong. You know? Mm. Let me drink some water. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Yeah, you know, so, um, 
T was denied something. Mm. And she said, no. My brother asked. Even they put all sort of obstacles mm. to prevent me, said no. She had to take money from our PD bank to make sure. Wow. I had that. Mm. And so without her, that's why mm. it's a dream for my sister. Mm. Sister. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, sir. Now I understand why you're so passionate about people because you understand what it's like to be in between both your parents, you know, fighting and so on, and growing up and being denied something or your sister standing up for you. So you also want to be able to stand up for other people, for youth, because you understand what it's like. And you also understand that um, coming from a family that is going through a lot can change a child a child's mentality can make them misbehave and so on. So it only takes love to actually bring them back to their senses and to bring out the potential in them. So I understand your sister is an amazing person for fighting for you, sir. So Funny, I, enough. Mm. Funny enough, she's late. Wow. I think she died about, um, let me see. Uh, um, she died over 10 or 12 years ago. Mm. Yeah. So um so it's quite a moving story. Mm. But uh, but I but I hope you took care of her and also um yeah, basically took care of her for being there for you when no one else um could fight for you, she fought for you. Well, I tried my best, you know. Um, you know, uh you can only try your best and let's hope your best is enough because um, yeah. well, it's, um, it's a very touching story, which mm. I don't actually talk about until, you know, um, a publisher came to me, uh, Kibli's, Kibli's, you know, um, publishing mm. company, mm. and they say, you know what, in fact, they've been chasing me for a few years and, you know, um, we just, you know, I think they probably just saw a few things in my, um, postings on social media and so on mm. and say you know what um we need we want you to write also i think the country publishers that always want to hear from the ethnic minorities and so on and mm. eventually say um okay i'm going to all right i'm going to start and funny enough mm. you know my you can imagine i've been dodging it for about four five six or years they've been asking mm. and then all of a sudden even despite the fact of campaigning for my re-election, my election which mm. was um, just March, just gone, mm. or I started around, I think around September last year, mm. I started checking my archives and putting things together, you know, to write it. And the book was actually launched um, on the 23rd of February this year. Uh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, a gym, um broken the gym for my sister that's why it's um you know it's um is to recognize and acknowledge the sacrifice she had to make in order for me mm. to have what i had and the same um thing i'm trying to do for others when we come most of the projects i'm involved in that mm. um if other people paved the way for her. even when you look at we're talking about slavery we're talking about colonization we talk you know um people having celebrating independence and so on they seem to forget mm. forget that there are people who paved the way for them there are mm. people who paved the way i mean some of us now who are in uk um or even other parts of the western world we can compete like me now i'm saying i want to compete to be a councillor. Uh, i've competed mm. i've been elected as a councillor. And I'm thinking I want to be an MP. But there's a time I can't even use the same toilet. Mm. I can't even drink the same pub. Mm. I can't even eat the same restaurant. Mm. But now, um, mm. I'm not saying we, you know, everything is fantastically well. But let's celebrate yes. what we have now, what we've achieved mm. so, so, True, far. so far. And then mm. look at where the gaps are and what we can do mm. together to have a better mm. world. And that's mm. what, um, so yes, I'm broken the dream for my sister. Um, it's an opportunity, I believe.
something that I can uh, give to other people as well. I mean, um, if somebody made the sacrifice, knowing fully well that she didn't have that, you know, yeah. and then she was not self, she said, okay, you know what, um, at least my brother should have what I didn't have. Mm. Mm. And you can't stop that. Okay, if you guys want, don't want to finance it, okay, I'm going to try my best. And mm. she did. So, I, and this is why I always say to other people as well that I've helped, because I believe I've been privileged to help hundreds of people in my life, mm -hmm. not thousands. But I say, um, it's like when Jesus Christ, then when um, he, he killed, I think he killed that leper or something, I say, just go and tell other people and, you know, be good and so on. I think the moral of it is that, uh, yes, um, it's not about me have you know asked it to come and tell me how great i am or give me some bad no exactly. extend the same love and generosity of heart to other people, to other people. Mm. when i mm. see that that what makes me happy and when i was reading on the on the linkedin another social platform a few days ago when i expressed mm. my interest in standing i could see mm. you know i i think about 700 800 plus for life you know, people who related, you know, to mine just because mm -hmm. I said I was standing and some people come in mm -hmm. and so on. And now 1,000 plus or something like that. Oh, yeah, go for it and in better person than yourself. Mm -hmm. And I just smile. Yeah. You know, um, some of them probably know a bit of my story, some of them. But mm -hmm. I, believe, um, I believe, yes, I'm touching some people's lives. And when you look at the comments they're making, uh, but when, until I wrote this book, not many people knew um, what inspired that. So I'm just oh, paying my debt. <laughs> so I'm just paying my debt, you know. Um, and that's what yeah. any of us or all of us can do. Uh, by yeah. being good to others, um, we can't blame everything on government. And in, in human beings like ourselves, you know, running yeah. those institutions, okay. of course, mm. forget about corruption, forget about all these other things that go with it. We are bound mm -hmm. to make mistakes along the way. But if the good intentions we have to transform the society, transform people's lives, even when we make mm -hmm. mistakes, people will see mm -hmm. that you are trying, mm -hmm. you are trying, mm -hmm. or the institution may be against you sometimes, but you are mm -hmm. trying your best, you genuinely want to transform people's lives. And that's what mm -hmm. the kind of change I try to represent, because we want change, you're not a part of that change you want to see. And, and that's what I try to do in everything I do. Uh, and I tell you, black men don't cry, but my own cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for that. Um, let's just take a short break. Thank and you. then um, let's just take a short break and then we'll be back. We'll be back and yeah, you can just tell us yeah. add any other thing you like to add, but let's take a short break for now. In the 21st century, technological advancement we all seek opportunities to move and network with the emerging space. Introducing Clevenard Blog and Event Posting. Do you think you have some interesting materials, good content, articles and stories? Then feel free to publish them on Clevenard Blog and Events page, just as team of our writers are doing presently. By blogging on Clevenard's blogs and events, you benefit from our reach and network. There are constant stream of people visiting our social platform and we have figured out just how to distribute our contents. This means you can basically skip the line and get access to a big audience from day one. Furthermore, we can help you get in touch with important people for projects with possibilities of translating your content into other languages and republishing them on Clevenard. This helps preserve and protect your content from getting lost. What's more, you also get to be part of our team with access to our network and lots of exclusives, behind the scenes information. And of course, you get full credit for everything you do, which brings you popularity and make extra income. Sign up now on clevenard.com and start blogging to your advantage. Please see the tutorial video on how to blog or post events on Clevenard blogs and events. For more information, contact info at clevenard.com plus 34-631-279811 website www.clevenard.com 
Clevenard, your blogs, your identity. <laughs> Welcome, guys. And you can see from before the break, uh, Mr. Sunny just explained what his book was about. And as he was explaining, you can see the emotion that came with the book or that came while he was writing the book and where his passion for people came from. It was actually from his sister who um, sacrificed a lot. Uh, for him to get an education and for him to be where he is today. And I like the fact that he didn't forget um, what the sister, the sacrifice the sister made for him. He still remembers it and it has made him um, and motivated him to be able to assist other people. So I think that's just the passion the passion is the most important thing when you are running for anything at all. So, sir, is there something that you'd like to add to what you've already told us? Um, I mean, what I mean, I what I can say is that um, any of us, um, I think, if I can remember a quote from one, um, I mm. think he's a philosopher, uh, mm. Buck, Buck, Mr. Fuller, who says that. Um, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. Mm. To change something, you build a new model that mm. makes the existing model obsolete. Mm. So, um, all I always try to do is to look at the existing model mm. and see whether it needs modification. And mm. if it needs more than just modification, build a new one. But nobody is an island. Um, find people, partners, collaborators who we share mm. with shared vision. Men, women, young, old, politicians, business mm. people. Mm. And then see what we can be build a new model together, a new vision mm. that can transform people's mm. life positively. Mm. That's what mm. I always try to do. Um, we can't just um, cry about something that is not there that should be there mm. but what are we doing to change the existing reality mm. what are we doing to mm. be part of the change we all want, want to see and that's why i use the, the proverb mm. i used earlier on that the birds of worry and care fly above your head mm. this you cannot change because the reality yes. is there so that you allow them to build nests in your air. Mm -hmm. This you can prevent by building new models. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yes, individually, collectively, mm -hmm. let's continue to do that. Okay. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. You've heard it from Mr. Sane. Thank you so much sir, for allowing us to um, share your experience and, you know, just talk about everything basically because you just you've spoken about so much and i believe a lot of our viewers will also learn from this it's very important for us to to make a positive impact in the life of someone because you don't know what that person can be in the future so thank you so much sir for and if for, i could for, just say before i go so if you don't mind okay um yes i mean there have been some wonderful people in my life which i want to okay. give credit to as well uh my godmother uh, late okay. now, um, Chief Mrs. Obafemi, um, sorry, Chief Mrs. Oedi, you know, who's uh, okay. Obafemi Aulawo's um, daughter, who just mm -hmm. passed away recently, of course. Last but mm -hmm. not the least, um, apart from my sister, I, you know, thank a lot, you know, but mm -hmm. my wife as well, you know, okay. <laughs> who made <some> <laughs> rock, uh, you know, yes. behind me, my wife, Jane. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to say, Thank you to all the and all the friends around me, you know, and those my friends um you know, um you know told, told me about earlier on Sunny, my namesake, you know, and so many others who have been great inspiration. Okay. I want to say thank you mm. to all of them and I know yourself as well for you know, um you know, a bit of you. Sir. Thank you so much and Cleveland, yeah, Cliff Cliff, Cliff Natch. So um, thank you, TV. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, you know, I uh, really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So, so we we want to wish you well. Yeah. Um. We yeah. We want to wish you well, and thank you so much once again for this. 
So viewers, you have it here, uh, Mr. Sunny in the house. So he has done so much and we wish him well, basically. We, we thank you for making it possible for us to interview you today. Thank you so much, sir. And love from Esther, Chidera. Have a lovely day ahead. Just enjoy the rest of your day. We are Thank you. I'll make sure you're going to Thank edit so where I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, don't try. <laughs> I don't think so. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you.